find, what do you all want to do? Temperature, volume, pressure? What do you want to do? Pressure. Pressure. Let's find D, P, D, little t. Okay. Little t is time, capital T is temperature. I want to know the instantaneous rate of change in pressure with respect to time. So to do that, I need to take derivative of the left side, which I'm going to need what? Product rule. Because these are both variables, right? All right. Derivative of P with respect to time times V plus derivative of V with respect to time times P. What's that? What did I just do? Product rule, right? Derivative of P with respect to time times V plus derivative of V with respect to time times P. None of those are, <coughs> are turning into ones, right? Go ahead. What you got? You sure? I thought it was just going to be one. Which one? This one. This. The first one ends. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, no. Right. You see, you see what I'm saying? Time is in the back. Time isn't in here, so nothing is going to go to one in this problem. Yeah. Nothing. Am I done with the left side? Yes. Yes? OK. Right side? And are, are constants. I do not need to apply the product rule. Right? Because the derivative of a constant times a function, the constant comes along for the ride. So this is just N capital R times, now what is the derivative of capital T with respect to little t? D big T over D little t. And that's it. Did that shut itself? No. Can you open that? I think someone shut it because they don't want to listen to us. So you have, you have three derivatives? Did it shut? Oh, maybe. You know what? That thing. Yeah. I think she's trying to sleep, and I'm, I'm keeping her up. OK. So what? You have three you, derivatives? We have potential here for three different derivatives. Now, we wanted this one, right, dp, dt? So we could actually now isolate this, which means we'd move this over. Let's go ahead and do it dp dt times v equals nr dt little t minus dv dt times p. So all I did was move this one to the other side. And then finally, I would do what? Divide by, Divide by v. Y'all see that? This has just stayed here. This one came over with subtraction. And then I'm going to divide both sides by v. Right? And that's dp dt. So if I want to know the rate at which the pressure is changing with respect to time at an instant. So I've got this experiment. Things are going. And then at some instant in time, I want to know how fast the pressure is changing at that instant. I need to know a lot. I need to be able to measure what? The volume at that instant in time the pressure at that instant in time, the change in the temperature at that instant in time, and the change in the volume at that instant in time. But there's a way to connect them all together. And this is the way to connect them. This is an equation. This is what could be referred to as, as a differential equation, which there's an entire course on differential equations. And what differential equations is really about is equations that involve derivatives, where the derivatives are part of your equation. Like, they're in the equation. Derivatives are in there. But, OK. You all doing all right? Yes? Let's do one more example, and then I'll just have to let you go and mess with this at home and see how it goes. How about maybe two more? Let's do one that has some trig stuff in it. How about cosine of xy squared plus x squared y equals
x plus 1. I'm glad you asked. I was going to see, I was going to see if anyone had any any question as to any additional information you might need here. Someone has to tell you what to find, right? I mean, you can do a lot with this now. So the book says here, when you get to your homework, it says find dy dx. So that's kind of the traditional derivative, right? It's the derivative of y with respect to x. So we treat x like the independent variable. So anytime we see x, the derivative of x would be 1. So let's see if we can do that now without having to write dx dx all the time. Let's actually let the derivative be 1. What do we have there? Cosine of xy squared? Chain rule. Chain rule. Inside the chain rule? Product rule. Right? So, yeah. All right, so let's try this. What is the derivative of cosine of my hand? Negative sine of what? My hand. Okay, what was my hand? X, Y squared. Am I done? No, okay, I've done the cosine, right? Now I need to multiply because it's chain rule times the derivative of my hand. But my hand is a product, isn't it? So I must do a product rule on that. And that's going to give me two things, right? So I better put this all in parentheses because this sign thing was supposed to multiply times that, right? So I have to have this in parentheses. It's going to be a little plus in here. But now I need my little pieces. So what about the first piece? What's the derivative of x with respect to x? dx d x, so 1. I'm not going to write dx dx anymore. Times y squared plus the derivative of y squared. Careful. 2y times dy dx times x. OK, so there's a lot going on there. There was a chain rule in that product that was part of the chain. But this one, this right here is just what I was talking about right before we started this. That if you have something to a power, you've got to, you've got to eventually go in and take the derivative of what's in there. If the derivative of what's in there is with respect to the same variable, it's a 1. But in this case, it's not. Derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. So take a look at that. Make sure you understand where every piece comes from. Does anyone have a question as to where anything from there comes from? Sure. Did I? No. You take derivative two y and you take derivative in respect to x. So you're doing like twice. No, I'm doing this. I'm taking derivative of something squared, which means the two comes out and then I add the something, right? Then I take derivative of what's in there. So this, I had a y. So it became 2y and then derivative of y. This was dy dx. That's this part right here. Multiply it by x to, to finish the product rule out. Right, this is product rule in here. f prime g plus g prime f. But that's all just the derivative of the inside, which was part of a composition. I was telling my Cal 2 class, you know, that um, in Cal 1, there are certain points in Cal 1 where the subject kind of builds on itself pretty rapidly. Like last class, we did chain rule. And now we're, chain rule is just part of this. So you have to kind of have already kind of mastered chain rule. And that's pretty quick, to a quick turnaround, right, to, to be here a couple of days later. And now you've got to understand chain rule really well. Cal 2 is like that almost the entire way. It's the turnaround on things is, is immediate. So the next time you meet, every single time you meet, it's like that. So you have to be prepared for that. So it's not just, this is not just a little anomaly. It's one of the things that makes calculus tough, I think. 
I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just, you know, I don't want, I don't want people lying to you to tell you something that's not. Yes? Is it x squared, um, the last one? Here? Yeah. Uh, no, because that x comes from this right here. Oh, okay. I haven't even started this yet. Oh, yeah. yeah. I haven't even started this one. I'm moving on to that now. So I, we've taken care of just this derivative. That's all of this. Then plus what? Okay, so 2x times dx dx, which is 1. I'm going to put it there, even though we don't need it. And then times y plus dy dx times x squared. All right, so this is the product rule on that piece right there. Anything else on the left side? Equals the derivative of x with respect to x, which is 1. And the derivative of 1, which is 0. So that's it. Let me just rewrite this. Negative sine of xy squared times y squared plus 2yy prime x plus 2xy plus y prime x squared equals 1. I replaced all my dy dx's with y primes just to make it a little easier to write. How are you going to solve for y prime? You've got to isolate it, right? So here's a y prime. That's fine. The other y prime is trapped. That's right. This other y prime is trapped. Unless you forgot the parentheses, in which case you're going to be completely wrong, right? But it is trapped. So how can I release it from this parentheses? That one, uh, if we do that, we're going to get it. It's going to have to divide here and here and here, right? Distribute it. Right? Isn't that how we usually release things from parentheses? We distribute. Mm -hmm. So can't I just take this whole thing and multiply it here and here? And the parentheses would no longer be there, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens if I multiply this times negative, I mean, sorry, times y squared? Okay. Negative y squared sine of x and all that, right? So this just becomes negative y squared sine of x y squared. Okay, that's distributing from here to here. Now, from here to here. Minus 2 y y prime x sine x y squared. I mean, that's what it is, right? It's not pretty. I didn't say it was going to be pretty, but that's what it is, right? And then the rest of it I can just leave alone. Plus 2xy plus y prime x squared equals 1. Now the two y prime terms are free, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So here's a y prime term. Here's a y prime term. I need to get both of those on the same side of the equation and get everything else onto the other side. Can you, add those can you do what? Wait, what do you mean? Uh, yeah, side. Oh, yeah. side. You want to move this one over to the other side? Yeah. Yes, you can move that one to the other side. <laughs> and the 2xy you can subtract. All right. Negative 2y, y prime x sine of xy squared plus y prime x squared equals 1 plus y squared sine xy squared, the hell's over, over there, uh, minus 2xy. And the whole goal of that was just to get a y prime that can factor out over here. That's just algebra moving things on different sides of the equation. They change signs. That's it. So I pull my y prime out, negative 2yx sine 
xy squared plus x squared. So I pulled the y prime out of both of those. Equals 1 plus y squared sine xy squared minus 2xy. And finally, divide, divide all, all that junk. by that junk right there. And that's, that's what the derivative is. 1 plus y squared sine of xy squared minus 2xy all over negative 2yx sine of xy squared plus x squared. You give me x, you give me y, I give you derivative, right? Let me just double check what your homework is for this. Oh, I have some old stuff to hand back. Bonuses and things like that. I'll just kind of pass these around. Just grab what you have. Let's see, Anthony, Daniela, Joshua, or Samuel? Yeah, what is this? Is this a test? This is the test. Here. Anyone that hasn't had, got their test back, they're right there. show you one that's a little bit ugly and then this will be our last example. Not a little ugly but a little weird. Did you make any changes That's what I'm looking at. I'm just making sure that we're good for it. So let's say we have this, square root of x plus square root of y equals 1. Find find y double prime. And I want to use implicit differentiation. The sign-in sheet's going to come around, please, initial. Yeah, so we're, we're going to have to just, you know, treat this like an equation, differentiate with respect to x. So if you see y prime or you see y double prime, we are differentiating with respect to x. It's implied, all right? It's implied, unless they tell you otherwise. So what is the derivative of the square root of x? 1 over 2 root x, right? That's what we always said. No problem. Plus, now here's where things get a little bit weird. What is the derivative of the square root of y? 1 over 2 root y, right? But you then have to go and take the derivative of what was inside, which would be dy dx. See, you did it here, too. The derivative of x inside you did, but it was a 1. So you, didn't, you don't need to write it. Here, we have to write it. Equals what? Equals zero. zero. Yeah. So can we solve for y prime here? Yes? So 1 over 2 root y times y prime equals negative 1 over 2 root x. All I did was just move this one to the other side. Now what to get y prime? Divide by, one over two. Divide by this or flip it in both sides. 
Right, multiply both sides by 2 root y, 2 root y. Yeah. y prime equals 2 root y over 2 root x. The 2's cancel. And you get square root of y over square root of x. Negative. Uh, I forgot it again. Right, this one right here, negative. That's the derivative, right? Now take the derivative again. So what is the derivative of y? Sorry, the derivative of the derivative of y. So what's the derivative of the left side? This is y prime prime. So just, see, we, we were actually able to solve for y here. Like here we could never solve for y, so we just we did the, the um, implicit differentiation. Since we know y prime is on one side, when we take derivative of y prime, we get y double prime. On the right side, though, what are you going to have to use? Quotient rule with chain rule. So let's try this. I'm going to move this down just a little bit. Quotient rule looks like this. That's what quotient rule looks like. So what is the derivative of the top? Because that goes here. What's the derivative of negative root y? Negative 1 over 2 root y times y prime. Right. What is the derivative of this? Negative, because it's negative. Square root of something, the derivative is 1 over 2 times that root. But then the derivative of what's inside, derivative of y is y prime. We OK with that? OK, that's the derivative of the top times the bottom. What's the bottom? Square root of x minus the derivative of the bottom. 1 over 2 root x times 1. We don't need it times the top, negative root y, all over the bottom squared. It'll be x when I'm done. All right, let's see what happens now. Let me clean it up. Do you agree that this right here, multiply together, so y double prime is, let's see here, negative root x over root y times y prime. So when I uh, forgot the two. Do we agree? These two together? This root x just goes on top. Negative y prime, just leaving it out on the side like that. How about over here? Root y on top of root x, negative and negative is positive. So plus root y over 2 root x, that's this. And then this is x. There's something else I can do. Does anyone see what I can do? Yes, you could. Hold on, though. Before we do any rationalizing, anyone see anything that we can do? <laughs> we know the derivative of y. We know what y prime is, don't we? Mm -hmm. y prime is this. So can't I come in here and replace this y prime yeah. with that expression? Mm -hmm. So y double prime is equal to negative root x over 2 root y times negative root y over root x plus root y over 2 root x all over x. And what happens there? You get some cancellation here, right? Negative and negative is positive. Root x, root x, root y, root y. So that whole thing just turns into what there in the front? 1 over 2? 1 half? So y double prime.
y double prime is one half plus one or root y over two root x over x. You, can do common denominator. you could get a common denominator here. Let's try this. Common denominator between these two. What would you need on top and bottom here? Square root of x. So wouldn't this become square root of x plus square root of y all over 2 root x all over x? OK, so put those two together, root x on top and bottom here. That root x plus this root y come together, the common denominator is here, and that's all over x. Mm -hmm. Did you keep going? Yeah, so then you multiply by the reciprocal. So you could do like, you mean like this yeah. and flip? Okay. First, yes? First, would you rationalize before you did that? Um, I would not touch the numerator for one specific reason. We'll see if someone sees it. When I flip like this, the x joins down there. It's x root x. Anybody see? Look at the, what's the original problem? Oh, yeah. What did the original problem say to, that we started? What was the equation we differentiated? Square root of x plus square root of y. Equals 1. one. So doesn't the square root of x plus square root of y equal 1? Yeah. Right? For this equation, if we're on this curve, that top has to equal 1, doesn't it? Well, this is just 1 over 2 x to the 3 halves. That's it. You can move it to the top. That's the second derivative. So the reason I wanted to show you this is because the two homework problems you have, number 25 and 27, the uh, derivatives, when you work them out, the book cleans them up and they simplify. And you're like, how the heck did they get that? It has to do something with what I did here. You have to do some algebra to get it to clean up to look nice. So getting the derivative is one thing, simplifying it's another. All right, so if I gave you, if I gave you an, um, an implicit equation and, and asked you to find the tangent line at a point, does everyone understand what you would have to do? Like find y prime, then I give you a point that's x and y, and you plug it in. OK, we still have 15 minutes. What I'll do is I'm going to give you a problem here for you to work on and see how you do with it, all right? Do it on a separate piece of paper, just in case I decide to collect it. Find. equation of line tangent to y squared equals x cubed plus 3x squared at the point 1, negative 2. Uh, hold on. 1 for x. Yeah. Let's, let's first all agree that this is an implicit equation, right? Mm -hmm. If I give you x's, you can actually determine y, but you have a y squared. So you'd have to square root, and that will give you plus or minus. So it's, it's not a function. But does this point live on that curve? If you plug in 1 for x, you get what? One. You get 4 on this side. If you plug in negative 2 for y and you square it, you get 4. So it's equal, yes? So that point does live on the curve. And so what we're trying to find is not, not just the slope of the tangent line, right? The what? The equation of a tangent line, which you've been asked several times now to do, right? 
Yes? Will there be two different equations? There's only one because it's only one point. Oh, yeah, okay. Right? What you have to find to start the whole problem out is what, though? The derivative. The derivative. You need y prime, right? That'll give you your slope of your line. You have a point. Use the point slope formula to create the equation. All right? So see how you do with this. When you get an answer, raise your hand. I'll come by and take a look. You got about, what, 12 minutes? Yeah? OK. How about it? I'm going to shut my video off.